What is going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. This is Darian with Darian the Dev and in this video I'm gonna share with you guys my startup story which is basically the last five years of my life. <laughs> If you guys are new to the channel, if you're into tech, startups, entrepreneurship, coding, anything like that, make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe. That's all we talk about here on this channel. And thank y'all so much for all the love lately. The next person that hits the subscribe button is going to make it 200 subscribers on this channel. So I wanted to make this video as kind of like uh, in honor of that. Like this channel has grown a lot recently. I mean, at least a lot to me. I kind of wanted to make something a little bit more personal, take some time to just reflect on like where this whole channel has come. I know I allude to my startup all the time. And I always say if you're into tech, entrepreneurship, startups, and coding, and all that good stuff, but I don't really talk about my own startup experience. So buckle up, guys. This might be a little bit of a longer video, but in this one, I'm just gonna share with you guys um, how I got into my startup after I left college and yeah, kind of just go from there. Hopefully this will just, I don't know, inspire somebody out there or be some valuable information. So we're gonna start out in high school where basically all I did was focus on playing football. Like I'm from Detroit, Michigan in the United States if you guys don't know and we have a really terrible education system here and there's not a ton of opportunities outside of like the auto industry, Ford, GM, Chrysler, stuff like that. Both of my parents worked in that industry and they both worked at factories and I knew that's just not what I wanted to do. Football was the one thing that I really enjoyed doing and I didn't feel like there was anything else I could really see myself doing throughout high school. So from 14 to 18, I was basically just locked in, playing football, focused on getting my scholarship, moving out of Detroit, going to college and going to the NFL. Like that was basically the goal. My high school actually canceled my varsity football program my senior year in high school because not enough kids were eligible and not enough dudes came out to play football. So. They actually canceled my senior season, which like had a huge impact on my whole recruitment process. But, you know, I did get to play. And then Austin Peay State University in Clarksville, Tennessee, still took a chance on me my senior year and gave me a full ride to come play down there. So, um, so in the fall of 2013, I graduated and I moved to Tennessee on my own for the first time out of state. You know what I mean? I tore both my meniscus, um, like my second week in the camp. And my coaches, you know, first of all, they didn't give me an option whether or not I wanted to have a surgery. I never had a surgery before in my life. And I found out I had meniscus tears and they were like, hey, you're having surgery tomorrow. So, you know, we'll come get you at this time, yada, yada, yada. And that did a lot to me mentally to not have a say in whether or not my I got my body operated on. Because I had signed that scholarship paperwork and they owned me, basically they felt like they hadn't been getting any productivity out of me. I came in straight away. I didn't play my senior year of high school. They hadn't seen me on the field in two years. I came in straight away, got injured. They had to pay for me to get a surgery. So now they're kind of like upset. Like coaches weren't even talking to me, you know, and I felt like everything was about me proving myself to them. Like why they took a chance on me, why they're spending this money on me to go to school there. And then they even ended up giving me an ultimatum once I wasn't healing fast enough. They were like, yo, they wanted me to lift certain weight by certain days. They wanted me to be able to run at a certain speed by a certain time. And all these things are like, yo, if you don't start reaching these benchmarks by this date, then you can sign this paper and then we'll release you at the end of the semester and you can go back home. So I signed the paper to basically release me at the end of the, or at the, end of the semester. But I couldn't afford school. I went back to my dorm. I had a nervous breakdown. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life, what I wanted to study, what I wanted to major, what I was gonna do if I moved back home. So um, I called my coach like in a, in a panic and just like crying, broke down, apologized. You know, he understood because I was like 18 at the time. He accepted me back on the team. And then I went, I, you know, recovered. I ended up playing throughout the spring and like working my way up the depth chart. and. You know, all seemed cool until that second year came back around and it was like a replay of the first year because I just realized how much I really hated fall camp and how much I really didn't like being a college football player. Like even though my school was paid for and I thought it's what I wanted, going to the NFL and all that stuff, but the lifestyle, man, was just crazy. I didn't, I, I just wasn't, I wasn't really in love with it, you know? Basically played football for four more years. I knew I was gonna be unhappy. So 
I finally quit my second year um, on my own terms. You know, I, I gave up the scholarship and I moved back home where I went into like this mad depression for like the first month that I moved home. I was just completely depressed, locked in my room. I didn't talk to anybody. I didn't really mingle with anybody. Um, I just stayed to myself on the computer like all day for like a month. And I was just trying to find myself, you know, just trying to figure out what is it that really drives me, not just the NFL and being a great football player, but what really am I good at? What do I care about? What am I passionate about? What do I enjoy doing? Got a job. It's my first like real job, honestly. And um, I was selling furniture, hated that as well. But, you know, it, it just gave me something to aspire and like try to get good at and to leave the house, make money and just, you know, and start focusing on my life after football. I started getting into my own like personal development journey, um, Ty Lopez stuff, like this is back in 2015, but I took the 67 steps um, at that time and um, it did a lot for me, man. And I ended up reconnecting with a friend of mine from high school and we started, you know, realizing that even though I had been gone for like, you know, close to two years, that we both had, had gone through similar like growth, like, journey that's kind of how we linked up after i quit school and how we started kind of getting into apps and, and business ideas because we were looking at things like snapchat and instagram they were starting to pop up and get big in like 2015 and stuff we we're like yo these are stupid apps like how are these things making so much money when they sell you know what i mean we're like yo, we can think of something better than this so we came up with this idea for like um us we wanted we were into reading like i said so we wanted to make like a like a a really dope quote search engine you could search quotes by time period uh you know directors historians philosophers like you could just look up any genre any time period uh political figures like you could type in any category of thing and get quotes from people in that niche basically or that category and we're like yo we're about to be whatsapp group me Snapchat, whatever, you know? But we didn't think about it like that. We just got really excited and that kind of drove us and pushed us forward. And so we started, you know, quickly realizing, you know, that we didn't know anything about a business. We started like drawing up the the wireframes on paper and just trying to convey our idea because we didn't have an app, but we had to show people what we were trying to do. And so we started drawing wireframes and just thinking through the user experience, all this stuff and talking to all these people. And they're like, oh, you guys need validation. You guys need to talk to customers. You might want to do some surveys and do all this stuff. And that leads me to this next picture I'm going to show, which is so funny to me. My boy was a student at Wayne State. It's a, it's a college here in downtown Detroit. And so he had access via email to every student that he ever went to school with ever in any class at Wayne State. I made a survey monkey and it was a survey basically just like about the features of our app, about if they would use it. Cause at this time we had pivoted away from the search engine thing, from talking to people and stuff and realized that we needed to come up with something that a little, like had a little bit more like practical value, not just like something that you download and just use every now and then, or maybe never. He uh, wrote the email that basically asked for the feedback from all the, the students. Like, hey guys, I'm a student, I'm working on this project. I'm trying to get some feedback to figure out like we're gonna build this app. What do you guys think? And yo, we got so many emails. We got like thousands of replies in like a couple days. You know what I mean? Like just flooding in through the survey monkey. And for us, most people were saying yes. Like, like they would use it. They liked it. They were giving us like great suggestions that we hadn't thought about. And it was invigorating. Like it made us feel really, really good. You know what I mean? Because we had taken this chance that you can see from that, you know, that picture from Wayne State. They're like, yo, you guys are spamming us like... They literally were telling us to like stop sending them spam or whatever. Um, and I think that's just so funny when I think back on it because we didn't look at it like that. We looked at it as an opportunity to just get feedback for the idea that we came up with. And we just really wanted to, we wanted to know what people wanted from us so that we could go make it. So we went from not knowing anything about the app to like knowing that we needed to talk to people. We needed to validate, we needed to know like what do they want how do they want to use it what do they want to use it for who are our competitors like we learned started learning all this stuff and getting into it from just immersing ourselves you know right away not too long after that um you know i had found an accelerator program in mount pleasant michigan which was a little like two hours away from where i lived in detroit and i was talking to them about about hearing us pitch the idea that we had and they they helped grow small businesses and so I wanted to get into one of their programs that we could have some mentorship or some guidance and it was also in partnership with Central Michigan University here in Mount Pleasant. So I'm like, 
you know, it made sense. Like it was a, it was a university. They had a small business incubator on the university campus, and we seemed like the perfect fit to be a part of that. So while I'm trying to get us into that, I end up getting this next email you guys are gonna see here on the screen from my boy, basically saying that he doesn't want to be a part of the app anymore, and you know, life kind of came his way. He told me that he believed in me and believed in the idea, but he just wanted to, you know, worry about what he had going on in his life at that time, which is totally fine. But back then, again, it's 2015, and this was my friend since eighth grade, and we had graduated high school in 2013. But it was really hard to kind of like to hear that disappointment and kind of face that disappointment from somebody who I had started the whole thing with and we had done so much together and like I felt like we had grown so much in a short window of time together and we were making so much progress but for him he felt like our relationship was becoming like very businessy and he wanted to kind of focus on like work and school and like figuring out what he wanted to major in and stuff and like he just he wasn't ready. 2015 I move up to Mount Pleasant where I joined that accelerator program. So I'm on the campus and I just blended in like a student. I got right to like talking to students and asking them to fill out surveys, like randomly just walking into buildings or just walking on campus on certain days and talking to teachers after their classes are over, like just walking in the classroom, just literally saying, hey, like I'm working on this app, I'm building this, I'm working on this business, I'm with the, the incubator here on campus and just basically talking to whoever I could. Like I went from being kind of defensive when people gave me feedback and told me they didn't like certain things or tried to oh it should do this or it should do that or I don't really like this I don't know about that or this already does that like that type of feedback used to make me upset or used to like bother me you know what I mean and eventually over time I started to enjoy that because I'm like these are you're telling me all the things that I don't know right now it's almost like I realized that through customer validation that they can almost do the heavy lifting for you the customers like they can tell you what you don't know they can tell you what they would be concerned about and that's ultimately who matters right the users the customers so i just fell in love with that process i started like throwing parties at my apartment where instead of paying money to come in the party you would fill out a survey like a validation survey a customer validation survey to get in the party but i still needed a team and i still needed someone to help me build the app so uh, I'm speeding through the story a little bit for the sake of not making the video too long It's gonna be long guys, but I'm trying to get through all the main things So I ended up finding like a group of friends on campus They were already like business students on campus and they all had different backgrounds and different skills It was like 15 of them guys and they all loved the idea that I had and we all ended up basically going into an Internship agreement an unpaid internship agreement where I was able to work out with the heads of their departments at school to get them college credit in exchange for experience building a startup or working with a startup. The year previous, this was an idea that was on paper with a friend of mine who, you know, was nowhere in the picture now. Now I have 15 other people that I don't even know, but like, we're slowly becoming friends. They believe in the idea. They want experience for themselves in as business students and marketing students and all this other stuff. They want the experience. They need the experience. They want extra college credit as well, but we also want to see, can we actually make this thing reality? Can we actually make this thing happen? I met my first programmer at this time as well. So he's so good as a matter of fact that this guy has a desk at the accelerator, the co-working space where I'm at, but his company is in Dallas, Texas. So this guy was the first person that I ever saw working remotely and he just did what he wanted to do. He worked when he wanted to work. He took video calls and like conference calls on his computer, but that was it and I'm like, and he was getting so much money. I'm like, dude, like, what do you do? And he's like, I'm a software developer. And I've been doing this since I was, you know, 15 and blah, blah. I'm like, what does that even mean, dude? Like, what? But I slowly started to realize, like, yo, that's what I needed. Like, that's how apps get built. I need a guy like this. And so I couldn't afford his services at the time. But we ended up working out, like, this agreement that I'm going to put on the screen. And it basically says that he will teach my team of interns since i had so many people he's like yo you've got enough people that you know they can learn how to do this and you guys can start piecing this together yourselves man i'll just kind of show them what they need to do and then that way it'll be a lot cheaper on you the guy ends up showing up for one session to work with my team and then he goes ghost stops replying to phone calls text messages emails everything never shows up again and so what I realized at this moment in time in doing business in the startup world was that like a piece of paper, like just with the NDA, with the Appster people, a piece of paper or a contract is only as good as the person's character that 
offered the contract you know like it's all about the person's integrity it's all about what type of person are they it has nothing to do with what the piece of paper says because that only is going to go as far as it holds up in court courts long and expensive and all that good stuff it's much better to just do business with people who you feel good about in the first place or have a good relationship or a rapport with in the first place uh that's what i learned from this email it's just like when i look at all this stuff now and i look back on it and i think about all the experiences that taught me what i know now and how far i've come it's just like oh. because that it really teaches you like self-reliance and not to put trust in people even if it's like contractual stuff like this like you have to hold people accountable and have some checks and balances or a way of like making sure that you're not getting screwed over no matter what type of business you're doing so from that man I, I basically was like you know what forget it you know that really motivated my entire team because they were like yo man we swear we hate to see that he did that to you blah blah like how can we how can we do this how we still want to we still want to make this happen but the only way we could do that was with money but you know with so many people who believed in the idea and having a strong team we had the ambition and the drive to go figure out how we could raise some funds. And so there was this pitch competition in Grand Rapids, Michigan called 5x5 Five Five at the time. And every month they would take applications where you would put an idea up on the site. It didn't have to even be a real company. It just had to be an idea. And you put the idea up and you try to get as many people to go to your, your link for your application and get them to vote for you to be in 5x5. Five and then the, the top five ideas with the most votes got to go and pitch their idea at the competition for a $5,000 grant. They didn't owe it back. It wasn't a loan or anything like that, guys. So this screenshot right here is going to show you guys that me and my team went nuts. Like we took this opportunity and ran with it, yo. Like we went and flooded social media. This is not even like the end result. The end result was way worse. Like we ended up blowing out every other idea by like, hundreds of votes because i had like 17 people who all were young and we had a college campus like on our hands and they had friends and all type of stuff so we just blasted it out and got so many votes that we were guaranteed that we were going to at least be able to pitch at this competition right <laughs> so we end up as you guys can see we finished number one in the voting polls and then they ended up selecting five different ideas that were not the top five that actually got the idea that actually got the votes and they basically were just like hey guys um this month we decided to go with a special focus you guys should try again next month and in that moment in time i realized that you can't get tied to the results of these like competitions and like anything that's trying to raise capital for small businesses or whatever, because that money comes from somewhere and that person has a motive or an incentive, whether it's an organization, a foundation, a nonprofit, an individual person who has a lot of money, like whoever's putting up the money for the pitch competition or the whatever, the, the, you know, the startup accelerator program, whatever it is, if there's money tied to the, the, uh, the end of it, there's always going to be room for politics and you know nepticism and just so many things going on behind the scenes that you don't have control over as the entrepreneur so what i learned from this was that you can do everything right that the you know application asks for the website the cohort the accelerator program whoever it is the investor but ultimately if you don't have the funds in your control then you're always at the mercy of someone else's emotions or decisions or their purpose or whatever they want to do you're always at the mercy of things happening like that so it's better to just be bootstrapped and self-funded than relying on you know competition money and pitch money to basically fund your entire startup there's infinite reasons why things like this happen guys but the best startup doesn't always win the best business model business plan product with the most traction like they don't always win these competitions sometimes it's literally just who you know so I learned that the hard way with that screenshot I just showed you guys. Um, so that kind of wraps up my 2015. I moved back down to Detroit. Um, I'll show some videos here from more of the pitches that I got into when I started coming back to Detroit. I was in Tech Week. It goes from city to city and showcases the best startups basically out of that city. And I got to be in that in 2016. It was their first year in Detroit, which was a really big deal for me. And it helped me just be motivated to continue going after everything that had just happened. You know, I did a lot of other pitches like D New Tech and 
just all these other pictures you guys are going to see on the screen here right now. And it's so funny because I look so young, yo. It just goes to show like how much of the evolution has come from like learning how to pitch. Like when I look at some of this stuff, I look so young and like unrefined and like the way my slides look. And if you hear, if you could hear the audio, oh, it's so cringy when I listen to myself pitching these videos, guys. But it just goes to show like the grind of realizing I don't know these things. I don't know how to pitch. I don't know how to present my business in a certain way. So let me find out. Let me go compete with other people. Let me figure out. Let me get the feedback from the investors or from the people in the crowd, the audience, the users. Let them tell me how my pitch could be better. You don't understand this because I didn't explain it well enough. So how do I make that more clear? How do I set myself apart from my competitors easily in my pitch? How do I get my pitch down from five minutes to 30 seconds? These are all the things I found out from doing these pitches and stuff that I'm showing you guys. And I just feel like that's mainly what was going on in 2016 while I was still trying to figure out like, how can I actually get an app built? Because at this time I still didn't have an app guys and I didn't even know how to code. So I came a long way in terms of business, but in the tech side of things, I still was like completely clueless. So I didn't know anything. I had come across another software development firm this time it was actually in Michigan, so I felt better about doing business with them. And I heard nothing but good things about the products that they had built. And so I basically approached them and told them that I wanted to build this idea out that I had to start up. And they were like, hey, you know, we like the idea, this, this, and that. Very similar to what Abster did. We'll build it for you for this price right here. <laughs> Which is crazy, right? Because that's like the biggest invoice I had ever seen. I'm like 20 years old, 21 years old at the time. And I had never even had that much money. You know what I mean? So I was like, oh my God, the cost of doing business sometimes depending on what industry you're in or the cost of just not knowing something. Like I was looking at paying that much money simply because I didn't have the skill of knowing how to make an app. It was crazy to see like how much more I still had to go if I was gonna have complete control over like every aspect of the business in terms of knowing every part of my own business, right? You're trying to get into a tech business and you don't know tech. And I just realized that there's no way you can really do that. It doesn't matter how good the idea really is. You can only go so far without knowing the technical side of things. I end up bootstrapping it. I don't pay that price, but I end up getting it built. And, um, and then you know, that really allowed the ball to get rolling because at all the traction up until that point, tech week, all the pitch competitions and everything, everything had been from like business models, pitch decks, and just networking basically, how I was able to do any of that stuff. But with no product, no users, no customers, it was rough. And so once I actually had an MVP, things seemed to be like a lot easier to get the ball rolling. So then I started being able to do pilots, I was able to go to high schools and like actually see the platform working up in the schools on their computers, yo. And that was just when I started having the mindset shift of like, this can happen. This can really be a thing. Like it's not there yet. It's going to take a very long time. Like, but this felt real fine from working with them. I learned a lot from like having sprint meetings and hearing about like how they split the project into phases and he's working on the database stuff and he's doing this, and he's doing that. So it really inspired me to start learning how to code. But this is where you guys hear me talking about on the channel that backend development was really hard for me to learn. And that really hurt me because I wanted to know how to do it. You know what I mean? So instead I just focused on front end development. I figured once I got good at doing that, then I would be, you know, able to pick up backend development, you know, easier down the road. So that's basically what happened in 2016. This is when uh, I decided to try to go to coding bootcamp. For the first time in 2017, I'd actually applied to go to a coding bootcamp. And I got past the first interview. You know, they let me come to orientation. And at the time, the bootcamp was set up that when you go to orientation, orientation is like the final tryout of everybody to see who makes the final class roster. And I didn't make it to the final class. <laughs> they end up cutting me and yo, that hurt because it was a job of bootcamp. I finally would have got to learn back in. It was my first opportunity to get to, you know, really be able to take my idea into my own hands and start learning how this stuff works. And I didn't get in. 
which was another huge like just drop in morale even though it was my idea and even though i took all this time to talk to all these people and figure out what they wanted i still didn't feel right like i still felt like i was lying or like i was an imposter if i didn't code and so that really hurt me man um you know, luckily later that year, I ended up getting, based on the traction that I had already had from the, the users, the pilots and everything, I actually ended up getting a $5,000 grant, which you guys have heard me talk about in some other videos or one of my videos on this channel, but I um, ended up getting a $5,000 grant, no loan from a university, and that was like such a shot in the arm after not making it in the coding boot camp to just help me keep going i had some leeway to go into 2018 with to actually be able to like make some improvements to the platform even if i didn't know how to code myself and that's exactly what i ended up doing i used the five thousand dollars to make some updates to the platform and not only that but um you know i started realizing that yo Money is what I need to make any changes to this app until I know how to code. So I got a job at a pharmacy and I needed extra money on the side because I thought the pharmacy was going to pay me better than what it did, but it didn't. So I needed more money and I love doing videos, guys. That's why I, I make a lot of this stuff here, but I really like doing like film and music videos. Um, so let me know down in the comment section if you guys want to see me do some like film stuff and cinematic stuff on this channel. But I started doing music videos um, as and film really as a as a side hustle while I was working at the pharmacy to help me kind of just like fund my life and bills and everything, but also to reinvest into business stuff for the app. So I was doing that all 2018 until another opportunity for me to go to boot camp came up again. So guys, in 2017, just for perspective, I applied for coding boot camp and didn't even get in. And then in 2018. I actually got a scholarship to go to coding bootcamp and got accepted and was able to start in October of 2018, which is when this channel started because of that journey I just expressed to you guys right there. I wanted to start sharing whatever was going to happen, whatever my journey was going to be, whether I succeeded or I failed in coding bootcamp. I wanted to share the realness of it and the reality of it here on YouTube with you guys, just so that I could go back and watch myself and watch my journey as well. But hopefully inspire other people like you guys too because i know that coding used to be so hard for me and it's still very challenging on a daily basis but you know it's so crazy to see how far i've come and being able to get two jobs my first year of graduating coding boot camp and seeing how much my lifestyle has been able to change because of how much my income has increased where i was working at the pharmacy and shooting music videos and now i don't even have time to shoot music videos anymore because it's not worth me doing it like it doesn't pay as well so it's just so crazy guys and you know i just wanted to kind of share that you know because if it doesn't work out the first time you go to coding boot camp or anything like that as you can hear this whole story has been a bunch of ups and downs disappointments anything that you really want to do like anything you want to pursue it's going to be challenging especially if it's worth doing it it's going to be hard and you guys are going to have to be like the one thing that keeps yourself going. Felt like I never shared all this with you guys on the channel. I know we're gonna get 200 subs pretty soon, but you know, with that many people and just all the love that you guys have been showing and sending me like messages, just telling me that you guys enjoy these videos, like it just makes me feel grateful because you know, I want you guys to know why I do this. So to finish the story, y'all guys, I started coding bootcamp in 2018 in October and I graduated in 2018 in December. And then I got my first job 30 days after boot camp last year in 2019 in January. And then as you guys know, if you've been keeping up with the channel, um, a few months ago in January 2020, I started my second software development job. And now I'm working on building my startup myself. I'm making all the newest, latest updates that I want to the platform and like the whole journey feels like it's starting to come full circle like i've got so far to still go guys and it's been five years of my life just to get to this point but i just wanted to share with you guys like how i even like got to this point of like learning to code going to coding boot camp and making these videos and why i always talk about like startups and certain things on this channel because like it's been my life ever since you know i stopped playing football and i know some people are coming from different you know careers into coding in tech and stuff like that everyone has their own journey of how they arrive in tech and into coding or coding boot camp or whatever so i just hope that you guys can get some inspiration or motivation or something out of this story guys 
um because it's been a long ride you know what i mean but we're here we're alive we're making it you guys are here supporting and i enjoy putting this content out to hopefully you know you guys can learn something from it or get inspired from it because i know there's a lot of content creators out there that inspire me so i just want to do the same for you guys so i'm gonna wrap it up because i know this video is getting really long at this point if you guys are new to coding or you're about to go to coding boot camp make sure you check out the description box down below where i'm giving out my intro to coding boot camp course for free it doesn't cost anything except your email address and it has everything in there i wish i would have known before i went to coding boot camp so you'll do a front end project you'll start learning the basics of back end so it's just a really good like intro course doesn't cost anything i'll be back to doing the live streams next week guys for the career progression boot camp but i just wanted to make something a little bit more personal this week i've been doing some reflecting and thinking and i thought this would be a little bit helpful and it just was fun for me to make so i hope you guys enjoy it make sure you leave me a like smash that like button man if you guys like this if it was interesting or if you got any sort of value out of it or whatever leave me any questions down below this is darian with darian the dad i'll see you guys in the next video next week all right peace